Hi, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is uh, Tuesday, July 15th, 2025. Uh, we have a couple of things that we're watching. This updates for the All Hazards Consortium, the sensitive information sharing environment, where we share information across platforms uh, so private sector organizations can share information with public sector organizations and so on. Uh, so we can keep roadways open, commerce moving across the country, and most importantly, have utility vehicles be able to transition from one state to another without disruption on their way to restore power uh, to large areas that have been impacted, let's say, by landfalling tropical systems. Well, we're watching this one, and the National Hurricane Center is watching this one too. This is the GOES East high resolution satellite image, and you can see that spin, that low level spin right now that's uh, come ashore, oh, close to, well, south of Jacksonville, maybe around Daytona. Uh, and uh, it's not, it's just really a low pressure system. It's not anything tropical as of yet, uh, but indications are that it will make its way into the Gulf over the next uh, 24 hours or so. And uh, it's pretty impressive, at least the low level spin. I'm gonna go right over to the one minute satellite imagery uh, and that is showing it in Florida. Let's take this full screen so you can see what it looks like. All of these little white dots down here that you see, they're all little cumulus clouds that have formed and uh, you can see just moisture streaming in off the Gulf. Uh, creating these clouds because of the afternoon heating. And sometimes these clouds will develop into thunderstorms, and you can see those right here, uh, right around uh, the panhandle of Florida. Uh, but let's zoom in a little bit closer here on the one-minute satellite imagery. Wow, look at that. Let's go in here. You can see that circulation right in here. There are some thunderstorms off a uh, portion of that circulation uh, that has really been plaguing uh, north central Florida. Uh, there's some heavy downpours coming down out of this and also cloud to ground lightning. We can't stress enough how important it is to go indoors when you hear thunder or you see lightning in the distance. Make sure you protect yourself. We heard of another person yet uh, today that has succumbed to his injuries after being struck on July 8th, uh, unfortunately, by lightning. And that will continue as long as we have thunderstorms and we have thousands of them around the world each day. But here's that circulation that the National Hurricane Center is paying close attention to uh, because it is going to make its way inland and then off into the Gulf. Now, the question is, uh, will it stay to the north and remain over land or will it come across the peninsula of Florida and enter the very, very warm uh, Gulf of Mexico? Let me show you what it looks like right now from the standpoint of the sea surface temperature anomalies. These are uh, the anomalies from yesterday. Um, you can see what's going on as far as uh, the warmth and where that's happening. Let me show you right now, this area of cool temperatures is because of the northeast and easterly wind um, forcing the water to bank up against the coastline. And this is upwelling. That's why it's a little bit cooler here. That's not really going to have any impact as this low pressure system comes across the Gulf, uh, across the peninsula into the Gulf. And look at how warm it is. Some of these temperatures are very warm, approaching three to four degrees Celsius above average and so there's plenty of fuel in here as far as a sea surface temperature is concerned uh, but we also need other conditions too low shear and a lot of moisture so uh, it looks like we're going to have somewhat of those ingredients around uh, but the proximity to land is going to be the big question so let's go over back here to this uh, high resolution GOES image. And here's that circulation right around in here. We expect it to move across the peninsula into uh, the, the northern Gulf. And uh, that's where we think that it will perhaps strengthen somewhat, at least in organization. It does have a lot of moisture with it. So what I want to do is show you something really interesting here. I'm going to break the screen up into four panels. I'm going to take all the other information away. Okay, so this is called layered vapor transport. I have the legend on here, and you can see what it looks like uh, from the standpoint of 
uh, low amounts of water vapor in the gray to the green to the blue to larger amounts in the uh, purple and also in the red and yellow. Uh, and here, I'm just going to walk this through. This is kind of geeking out a little bit, uh, but I want to show you what it looks like. This is surface to 850 millibars, so the surface to about 5,000 feet or so. Look at how all of the moisture that came through the mid-Atlantic yesterday, producing all those flash flood warnings, has slid off the coast for the most part. It's hanging down in southeastern Virginia, some parts of southeastern North Carolina, into southern South Carolina, Georgia, and then into this area of moisture uh, that is moving across Florida into the Gulf. That's the surface to 850 millibars. Here is 850 millibars to 700 millibars. That's a little section of the atmosphere from maybe about five to 10,000 feet ish sort of thing. And we can see how the moisture stacks up here. It's all very moist in Southeast Virginia uh, from surface to 700 millibars. And then when we go from 700 millibars to 500 millibars higher up in the atmosphere, about 15,000 feet or so, you can still see that moisture there. That means there's a lot of precipitation to squeeze out and there's still a lot of moisture coming across Florida. That is what we're concerned about as this area of low pressure moves across the northern parts of the Gulf and taps that moisture and thunderstorm activity to give quite a bit of rain in southern Louisiana and Mississippi as this moves across. I'm going to show you why we're concerned about that as well. This is what it looks like on GeoCollaborate. You can see the area that the National Hurricane Center is very concerned about for development. I can click on this here and notice that it says 40% probability now in two days and a 40% probability over seven days. So we're thinking that this system is going to develop over the next two days, and it makes a lot of sense as it uh, moves across the northern Florida peninsula. But also, in effect, beyond these heat advisories are also flash flood or flood watches in southern Louisiana and also parts of southern Mississippi. Let me take off the outlook from the National Hurricane Center uh, for uh, this system over the next couple of days since we did just talk about it. Okay, so I'll take that out. I'll leave a little bit of the hashing there. But look at what's in effect in southern Louisiana. Uh, we're very concerned with heavy rain. It could be anywhere from five to eight inches of rain, but it could also exceed that if this system sits or drifts very slowly in the northern Gulf of Mexico. I'm very concerned about prolific rainfall totals in southern Louisiana that could approach 15 to perhaps 20 inches of rain in certain areas. Uh, flood watches are also in effect uh, for Gulfport and Biloxi and Mississippi, and uh, they may be issued as well uh, for Mobile and southern Alabama. They're not in effect there as of yet, but there is time. Now, what I want to do here just for a moment is to show you a combination of things. The graphic here in the middle uh, is the global forecast system focusing on this 93L, which is the invest. Uh, that the Hurricane Center is very interested in because it may possibly become a tropical system in the Gulf. On the right-hand side, you can see the one-minute satellite imagery from GOES. And what I want to do is just walk you through some of the time steps uh, showing precipitable water. Just think of this as moisture. Where it's dark green, it's really moist. And I'm going to step you through this uh, as we go through um, this forecast process. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go through uh, this uh, valid uh, tonight uh, into tomorrow morning, and you can see where that moisture is located. Look at this, right off the Florida uh, Peninsula in the Gulf, where it is very warm and very moist. Uh, but then we'll continue on and see where this moisture goes. This is 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, and look what's coming into the picture. A lot of moisture and southern Louisiana, and also southern Mississippi, and even the Florida Panhandle. This is why I said that I wouldn't be surprised if the flood watches 
get extended to the east to include Alabama and also the Florida Panhandle here. Because you can see, this is a high concentration of moisture. We call it um, flooding rain potential. This is really where we could see a lot of heavy rain. New Orleans, New Orleans is located right in here where the tip of the arrow is. And then I'll take this on into the future a little bit more. And you can see on into Wednesday night, Thursday morning, look at all that moisture around Southern Louisiana. And it just sits there and expands. And we're talking now Thursday night into Friday morning, Louisiana still has a lot of moisture over it. Doesn't mean that this is really heavy rain. It just means the tropical moisture is so thick. It'll uh, precipitate out in the form of very heavy rain if thunderstorms do form. Even Eastern Texas has to be aware and uh, they've had quite a bit of rain there recently too. So uh, the flooding potential could move over into Eastern Texas. So we're talking now about Friday afternoon. I'm gonna stop there. I don't wanna take it any further, but you can see here a little bit further uh, to, uh, to on the right-hand side of the screen, the low pressure system that is just coming ashore, if you call it that, in Florida, and it'll be moving across the peninsula into, uh, into the Northern Gulf of Mexico. Notice also to the West, we also have flood watches still in the area affected in Kerr County by those July 4th terrible deadly floods because this area of moisture is still hanging around. They had flood warnings yesterday in uh, some of the same areas and the flood watch maintains itself. It continues today because of potential heavy downpours. Also because of the monsoon flow, Flood watches in effect in southern Arizona, including Tucson. Doesn't take a lot of rain to cause flash flooding there. And also along the east coast, we do have flood watches still in effect. North, northern North Carolina that's still so saturated from uh, the, res the remnants of the tropical system that moved through there. And then in southern and central Virginia, because I showed you on that layered vapor transport imagery, there's still a lot of moisture hanging back here in southeast and southern Virginia. And those thunderstorms, any thunderstorms that form, could cause very heavy downpours. I want to show you something else too. I'm going to move up here to the north because you see these areas, these states in gray. I'll back out just a little bit. You see uh, in New York, it's gray, northern Maine, gray, also in parts of Michigan, around Chicago as well, in Illinois, and also the upper parts of Minnesota. These are air quality alerts because we have wildfires happening in Canada. And I'm going to show you uh, where all these point wildfires are happening, uh, but also I'm going to turn on the smoke model. And the smoke model shows us something very interesting. Uh, this picks up on real-time fire uh, fires that are happening in Saskatchewan, also in British Columbia, and the Northwest Territories. Look at where this smoke is being transported down into northern Montana and across the Dakotas and into Minnesota. We also have fires burning in Colorado and also northern Arizona and in Utah. These fires are emitting smoke, and the smoke has gotten quite thick around Colorado Springs and also towards Denver. Uh, they can also see and perhaps smell some smoke as well. But primarily, the smoke transport from the Canadian wildfires are to the north. So Minnesota, parts of Wisconsin, Michigan, into New York, and up into Maine. That is from wildfires uh, that are burning in Canada primarily and some local wildfires perhaps in parts of Michigan. Limiting visibility, but most importantly, making it tough to breathe. If you have um, any sort of respiratory ailments, it could make it very tough for you to breathe. And also if you have asthma, uh, if you're a small child, uh, please, in these areas where air quality alerts have been issued, uh, don't let the children stay out very long. Take them inside where you have air conditioning. Okay, I'm going to turn off all these advisories that the Weather Service has issued. I will even turn off uh, the national radar. Uh, you can see up here to the north and 
uh, the UP of uh, Michigan, uh, there are severe thunderstorm warnings in effect and also special marine warnings because of thunderstorms up there. Also in South Dakota, also down around the panhandle of Florida. Take you down there. Uh, these are some heavy thunderstorms. I showed you that around uh, Apalachicola and also Panama City. Uh, there are special marine warnings and uh, severe thunderstorm warnings from that batch of thunderstorms that are moving into the Gulf right now. There is a likelihood over the next one to three days that excessive rain could fall to trigger flood and flash flood warnings. This is another reason why flood watches are in effect in southern Louisiana and also southern Mississippi. This may be extended, as I mentioned, into Alabama and perhaps the panhandle of Florida as this system moves off the coast. Okay, let's take a look at the forecast over the next couple of days and where this low pressure system is expected to go, at least from the model standpoint. Uh, and it's, uh, it's going to kick up a lot of rain. That's really the big story here. Uh, again, in southern Louisiana, be prepared for very heavy downpours Wednesday night into Thursday. Uh, that could produce quite a bit of flooding uh, along the northern Gulf Coast states. So let's put this into motion and show you what it looks like. The low comes off the western Florida peninsula into the Gulf. Uh, you can see it kicking up quite a lot of rain. There's some heavy rain uh, being picked up, at least in the models right now, in parts of southern Mississippi and into Louisiana. Uh, and then it sort of sits and spins there. And this is really what I'm very concerned about. As long as it sits and spins in the northern Gulf, that has an opportunity to kick up very heavy showers and thunderstorms. We'll keep you posted over the next uh, couple of days, that's for sure. Uh, we'll be watching this because it's such a very impressive uh, spin in the atmosphere uh, that's moving across Florida right now. Uh, you can see that circulation just passing uh, over St. Augustine right now uh, and heading towards Gainesville, uh, but kicking off a lot of thunderstorms. I wouldn't be surprised to see any flash flood warnings issued uh, from those batch batches of storms that have been happening there. Jacksonville looks like you're fine. You have a series of showers and storms that might be passing through. Nothing really significant. Uh, and out on the horizon across the Atlantic, it doesn't look like we have any chance of further development in the tropical Atlantic for the next five days. Uh, but we'll be monitoring it, uh, of course, as we always do. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Thanks a lot for watching this update. Please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors. They really do appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow.